Hi, I'm Jason Rhodes, and this is a video series on hypermedia and REST API design. Now, if you're like me, I think you've probably been hearing a lot about REST and a lot about hypermedia over the last couple years, and it's probably sounded a lot like religious fanaticism. Now, over the next several videos, I'd like to show you how hypermedia and REST can be useful in a practical way. And I think the best way to do that is to build a bad API and slowly improve it using the concepts found in REST and Hypermedia. And along the way, I'll explain those concepts and try to show you the pieces that will be most useful as you design your own applications. So let's get started building this bad API. The code I'll be using can be found here on my GitHub page. My username is Jason Rhodes, and uh, the repo is called Hypermedia-Tutorial. We'll have a link to this in the video notes. There will be lots of branches in this repo because I'll be trying to keep track of various points along the way through the tutorial by just changing branches. So by the time we're finished with this video, this branch list will be very large. Master will be the final product, so when we're all done, everything will be in master. So if you want to follow along individually, you should just click this branch select box and pick the one that we're on for that current video. I'll be pointing them out as we go, and this first one will be number one, called RPC. Now, I've already got the repo cloned to my local machine, so if you'd like to follow along, you should do the same. And if you're going to do that, you're obviously going to need to know a little bit about Git. And you should probably also have a basic understanding of Node. Uh, you could write these examples in any language that you wanted, but if you want to follow along, the code that you're going to see in all of my examples will be Node. So if we open that folder up in our editor, we'll see that there's some files in there already. Let's take a look at just a couple. Package.json is where we define our dependencies for the project, and we just have two. NEDB is a very small uh, database library. It's just going to write to a file system and act like a, a NoSQL style database that we can query. Um, it's very similar to using SQLite in the sense that you shouldn't use this in production, but it's fine for our example. Express is just going to give us HTTP methods so that we don't have to worry about all the HTTP plumbing. We can just focus on hypermedia and REST and all the things that we're trying to explain in this tutorial. In our index file, we've actually just defined a few variables that we'll be using as we build our application. Again, you just see Express and our data store, which is just an instantiation of NEDB. So now I'm sure you're wondering, what are we building? We're going to be building just a very simple movie database API. We want to be able to store movies with just their title and a rating and be able to update both fields later. So we may actually just create the movies with just their title and then later go back and be able to assign ratings to those movies. We also need to be able to read back a list of those movies after they've been entered into the database. So that's what we want to build. To get started, we'll need to create a movies database. So we'll just store that in our DB object. We'll call it DB movies. And then we instantiate a new data store. And we'll just put it in the file name of DB slash movies. So we've already got a DB folder here in the repo. And auto load just means go ahead and load that database up. Don't wait for us to uh, load it later. Next, we'll start defining some routes. And we do that with Express using uh, their convenience methods on the route names. So we're just going to define a get route here on the root. So we'll say app.get, and we'll put it at the slash root. And express callback functions on the routes get a request object and a response object. And the way you respond is just using the response object's uh, send method. So just to test to make sure our app is working, we'll go ahead and send a message saying the API is working. All right. Now, the last thing you have to do to get this thing running is before we close this, we're going to tell the app to listen, and we'll give it a port, we'll say, on 3000. So now we have our app built to test, and in order to get it running, we need to go back to the command line, and we'll tell Node to run our application just by running that file. Now, we could just do node index.js, and that's going to work fine, but then every time we make changes to the file, we'd have to come in here, control C, and then reapply node index.js, and it gets pretty tedious. So if we do npm install dash g and do nodemon, N O D E M O N, that is a little uh, tool that will run your app and then watch that file for changes. And every time you save changes to that file, it'll bring the app down and restart it for you. And it'll even give you some nice error messages if you do something in your file that breaks the app. 
It'll tell you, it'll give you a stack trace to tell you why. I already have it running, so now I can just do nodemon index.js. So now we have our app running, we can go back to the browser and we'll go to localhost port 3000. And we have our message that says the API is working. So this is just a really easy way to make sure that everything is connected the way it's supposed to. If you get this message, we should be set. In the next video, we'll take the API project skeleton that we just built and turn it into an amazingly bad RPC-style API.